This program is brought to you by the friends and partners of Biblical Life TV. Deep waters to nurture and empower the remnant for the last days. There is a power that is about ready to be released from heaven to those that seek after the things of the kingdom of God. When it comes to the word of God, there is a supernatural unction of the Holy Spirit to learn. God is up to something for those that will study to show yourself approved. Right now there's a lot of things in the kingdom that God is trying to establish that goes against people's theology. You need to understand your roots, where you came from. God may require us to change what we're doing to make walking in the kingdom a higher priority than it ever was before. We were never called to have a little light. We were called to be ablaze with the fire of God in this generation. Join the remnant from around the world who are empowered by the Word of God to fulfill God's purpose in these last days. God is speaking something different. That is going to be essential in the days ahead, and that's part of this anointing that we have to have. Prepare yourselves for spirit-filled teaching. Biblical Life TV. Are you having fun yet? I tell you what I am. I'm having lots and lots of fun. Let's go to Numbers chapter 21 and verse 9. This is a situation that Israel, even though they had been redeemed out of Egypt, you're still dealing with the old man. And while wandering around in the desert, they started complaining and murmuring and griping about God. And something interesting happened. And I listened to one rabbi talk about this, and he said, when you look at what's being said here, those fiery serpents were seraphim, the ones that are before the throne of God crying out, holy, holy, holy holy is the Lord God Almighty said. Now that has been going on since the beginning of time, but there was an intermission. Because the people of God, the ones that have been freed from Egypt, that refused to cross over the Jordan, made allegations against God, and then griped about their punishment of wandering around in the, in the desert was so bad and so offended the seraphim, they left the throne of God. And they went down there and began tormenting the people. Better be careful about who you gripe about. There was another situation in the book of Daniel that Nebuchadnezzar was literally proclaiming, I have become a god, I have become like Nimrod. Look at this kingdom that I have built. And the book of Daniel says that he offended the watchers. Not God, the watchers, and he was struck with madness. You better watch out who you gripe about. Now you can gripe about Mike Lake all day, and I will sit beside you and I'll say, you're probably justified, never gripe you got. Don't gripe about God. Now you can go to him and say, I don't understand, but I know you're righteous, I know you're holy, I know you're true, and I know you're just. And so if what I'm experiencing doesn't line up with that, then I'm wrong, you're right, and help open my eyes to truth. But I, I refuse to let the old man gripe at God. And so... God came to Moses and gave a solution. And so Moses made a bronze serpent. That word serpent in the Hebrew is nachesh. Does that sound like a familiar name? The serpent in the garden, the dragon, the nachesh. He made an image of the nachesh. Now the serpents that came down had arms and legs, but the one put on the pole didn't. This kind of thrown you because there's only one seraphim in all of creation that doesn't have arms and legs, and it's the Nechesh. That we also see in, in uh, the mythology 
of many of South American, Quadicoazal, uh, Ametokuru, is the winged serpent that has no legs and has no, uh, has no arms. But we see other seraphim that have manifested in China that we get the concept dragon from. But he made a brazen image of the Nehesh and put it on a pole. And so it was, if a serpent had bitten anyone, when he looked at the broad serpent, he lived. Now, I want you to think for a minute that that word there, pole, is nace in Hebrew, which not only means pole, it means banner, signal, or standard. But what you don't see, unless you think it through, what's a pole? Well, a pole is made of wood. It's a cylinder made of wood, like a shepherd's staff. That that was a prophetic image that one day Jesus was going to take the staff of Adam and it became the cross and all the works that the Nehesh had done was going to be nailed to that cross by what he was going to do for you and I. Because what is so e e essential for us to understand? There are two natures, and there's two shepherd staffs. Adam's shepherd staff represents the old man, which became the cross. And how do you take care of the old man? You crucify him. And now through Christ, we see this over and over again in the New Testament, we have crucified the lusts of the flesh and the desires thereof. That Jesus redeemed back, took back that staff, turned it into the cross, and gave us a solution for the carnal desires that we have been trained in since birth. And turned it into something in the believer's hand that with the authority of the other staff that we can nail our carnal desires and get victory over them. Selah. Think about that. Now let's go on to Ephesians chapter 2 verse 1. kind of getting ahead of myself in my preaching, but this is all good. Starting in verse 1, And you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins, in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. This is essential for understanding spiritual warfare. Now we have dealt with how all nations except for those in the kingdom of God or under the authority of principalities and powers that fell away from God at the Tower of Babel. The course of this world is opposed to the ways of God. Anything that becomes popular, or to quote Lucy from one of those old episodes, anything that becomes popular, because that's about what it is. If the world thinks it's a good idea, 99.9999999% of the time, it's not. So why are we trying to align ourselves with the course of the world that we have been redeemed from? It is directed and maintained by the prince of the power of the air who is the arch enemy of Almighty God. We maintain our cultural relevance by not being like the culture. You don't help someone get out of the pig pen 
by go rolling around in the pig pen saying, see, I can have fun too. You stand way far on the side and say, this is what it's like to be clean and without disease and without all that stink on you. There's a shower. Won't you come and be like me? But what we're trying to do is we're trying to come be like them and we got one foot over in hell and the other foot in heaven thinking that we're going to get them in heaven when they're looking at us saying, well, you so like what we're doing, you keep on coming over to where we are. Another little sermonette. The spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience among whom also we once had, uh, we all once conducted ourselves in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh, of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath just like others. Now listen to what he's saying here. The lust of the flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind. Now how many know you didn't get a new mind when you got saved? Boy, wouldn't that have been handy. The new mind is the process of renewing the mind to the Word of God with this attitude. This book is right and you're wrong. This book is right, the world is wrong. If God said it's good, it will forever be good. If God said it is bad, it will forever be bad. The only thing the cross of Christ redeemed was you. Not sins, not the ways of the world, not the world's holidays and the way the world does things. They cannot belong to, they have never belonged to God. Redeemed means you took something back that once belonged to you. And I have so many Christians ask me, can God redeem this? No, it never belonged to him. Look at the origin. Come on now. If we're not different, there's nothing to contrast us, contrast sin to. The only way the world is going to see Jesus and the kingdom of God is through you and I. Because of grace, we have righteousness. And that righteousness is in contrast to sin. Now, the staff of Messiah can only function properly in the hands of one that has crucified the old nature through repentance, trusting in the completed work of Christ, and have renewed the mind so that he can move in the kingdom as Jesus moved in the kingdom as he walked the earth. What is an oxymoron is to say, I want to be like Jesus, but I don't want to keep the commandments. Because Jesus kept the commandments perfectly. Think about that. Jesus was the, the Torah in motion. He gave it to Moses. After thousands of years, he came down and said, Y'all, you all have really messed this thing up. You don't get it. Because the, motive, the, the key to keeping them is love. You've got to love the Father so much that you can crucify the flesh and, and say no to what your mind wants to do and your flesh wants to do and say yes to what God wants to do. You've got to be like me that I have not come to do my own will but the will of Him who sent me. <sighs> Watch he said it this way. He said, when you read, in the beginning was the Word and the Word became flesh. The Torah became flesh. The Word of God became flesh and walked among us. And we beheld the glory of the only begotten Son of God. And now we come into the picture. We get saved. And we got all this flesh that has been trained in the other camp. You don't have to get up and say, I'm going to have a bad attitude today. Sometimes it just comes naturally. 
woke up with an attitude. I tell you what, sometimes here lately my attitude's been showing because my, <laughs> there's been times my sanctification has wore just a little thin. You know what I mean? And that's, what I, that's when I got to stop, pray, strengthen the sanctification to get the flesh under. Paul reminds us here. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live, I live in the flesh. I live in the flesh. I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Now, one of the aspects of faith, guys, that we need to understand, what the, what the world is doing, what the principalities and powers and the liberal left and the Luciferian elite, they have programmed to be moved by feelings. Your feelings are fickle. And they change in a moment's notice. They can easily be manipulated. When, when I was in the military, uh, we had a department that was kind of like uh, dealing with motivation and organizational management and all that stuff. And I was helping them uh, set up for a mini conference they were going to do. They were having generals and different ones come in. And uh, uh, the sergeant major that was setting it up, said, watch this, and he put on some background music, because everybody was talking, eating donuts and coffee, looking forward to a day that they didn't have to worry about every, all the external things and all the busyness. They could just be free from all that for the next two days, didn't have any extra duties or nothing. It was just sitting in here taking notes, which in the military is really kind of a cool thing, okay? Better than digging a ditch, okay? It's, and so they, they, were, they were jovial, and he puts on this background music. And after about five minutes, you could see the people go, just tense up. It was the theme music for the movie Wrath of Khan. Because in the score of the music, it was, it was created to be in a certain place in the movie to, to cause the tenseness, the expectation of war and this conflict and the anger that Khan had against Captain Kirk. And, it, and in that music, it began to manipulate all these guys that were just thinking, God, man, I don't have to worry about nothing for two days. And next thing you know, they're, they're on edge. And then he turned it off and put on some elevator music. And you could just watch them kind of wind down. That's how easily we're manipulated. You cannot be ruled by feelings. And one of the most disturbing things I'm seeing today in the church is millennials are demanding that the old man have its way. And they're looking at the Word of God and said, I don't feel that it should be that way. Tough stuff. The devil, it's all mind games. Once you get saved, it's all mind games he plays with you. It's making you feel this way. It's dealing with emotions. And one of the, one of the things that I loved about the early days of the faith movement, this, this, man, this is going way back in the 1970s before it, before it really got squirrely. One of the things that they would love to say is, I'm not moved by how I feel, I'm moved by what I know. Because that's okay. The flesh is feeling this, but the Word says this, so I take that feeling and I crucify it with Christ. And I say the Word reigns supreme. We've got to return to that because the Antichrist will manipulate everyone based upon feeling. The only way to external victory is to see internal victory. Romans 12, 1 and 2. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. Not your extraordinary service. Not a service that is so profound, only a few can do it. It's just reasonable. You see, God wants you to die, He wants you to be a martyr. Unfortunately, it is on an installment plan. You've got to die to the old man a little bit more every day. And then you realize that it's the hammer and the nail in your own hands. You've got to do it as an act of faith. Be not conformed to this world. 
Be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove, that you may prove. Give evidence in court. Show the contrast. What is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God? Come on. One last one. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Your greatest spiritual warfare is not dealing with the people on the outside. It's not dealing with witches. It's not dealing with principalities and powers. It's dealing with the junk on the inside that needs to be conquered that you've got to do. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That word mighty in the Greek means the ability to do anything. But it's dealing with on the inside of you. That you have the authority to question any thought, any feeling, or anything you've ever been taught. Because how many know the devil was your tutor before you got saved? You were in the school of hell. And unfortunately, most of us, before we got saved, we had a double PhD from Hell University. But we have the authority, we have the power of God to call that thing a lie and to nail it to the cross and replace it with what the Word says. Let's keep reading. Casting down arguments. Your own flesh will argue with you. Anybody ever have an argument with yourself? Or is that just something preachers do? You can see it a lot of times. Somebody's just standing there at the restaurant. Bad food, good food. Bad food, good food. <laughs> They're like deers caught in a headlight. Sometimes that chalupa wins, okay? Some, sometimes that wins. You, you see this conflict going on. If you learn to win the war on the inside... That you can stand in line with Jesus, spirit, soul, and body on the inside. The devils on the outside don't have a snowball's chance in hell of getting victory in your life. But if you don't do this, you'll start coming in line with what they are saying because you just feel that might just be right. They play on your emotions. You know you need me. Come on, I'm your go-to guy when things get rough. Now, I made sure things get rough so that you'd come into my loving arms and do the old stinking things you used to do before you got saved. You need to cold cock that sucker in the name of Jesus and say, you're not going to be my go-to anymore. My go is to is Jesus of Nazareth, and I go to the cross. Because whenever I go to the cross, you hit the mat. Casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. It's not your fault if something goes through your head. The place that demonic works and the place that principalities and work is in the soulish realm, the second heaven, which we, we were created to receive broadcast from that, if you will, before they fell. No more than you can blame a TV if you turn it up and it picks up channel 3. You don't look at that TV and say, yo, dirty dog, how dare you pick up channel 3. It's in the air and it had an antenna and it picked it up. But there's something called a remote. You change the channel. You say, no. That isn't the way that I think. That does not line up with the mind of Christ. That does not line up with the Word of God. I repent of even having that thought. I bind that thing up. I cast it from me. And I choose because now the new man has the, 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 the staff of Messiah. I can now choose what the Word of God has to say. And I declare you're a lie and that you're wrong. Now feelings, bow the knee. You no longer control me, I control you. <laughs> Verse 6, and be ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. You know what that's meaning? When you obey the word of God, hell has to pay a price. How many want to give the devil some hell? I want to be able to wake up in the morning and the devil says, Oh no! He woke up. 
What's he going to do today that's going to make it hard for me? (laughs) Everything I can find in the Word of God. But see, it's conscious. Old man, you don't have to think about it. New man, you got to think about it. You got to put it with faith. Faith is an action. Faith says, I will do this regardless of how I feel because thus saith the Lord. Man, if we'll get that radical, you're going to get radically blessed. You'll get radically happy. You'll find out that there's peace that passes all understanding. You know what that means? Everybody else is running with like chicken little with their heads about ready to pop off. The world's falling apart. The world's falling apart. I'm cool. I know who holds tomorrow. He's got a hold of my hand. I'm walking with him. And if my heart would stop today, I would only miss a beat because I know where it's going to pick back up in a second later. Death is no longer even an enemy. Sin's no longer an enemy. It's something to be put underneath my foot because I now have the staff of Messiah, the authority of Christ established in my heart, and I can take authority and control that old staff and the old man because of who I am in Christ. Father, I ask that you would give us a supernatural tenacity by the power of your Spirit To no longer play with sin, Father, we're to fight it with everything that we have. We're to fight feelings that do not line up with the Word. And we are to fight the course of this world because we are of another kingdom. And Father, I ask within the the, the remnant that you loosen anointing, Father, to bring the old man underfoot and for us to begin walking in righteousness. And Father, we can change the shape of this world by becoming salt and light once again, in the midst of the darkness. And Father, we thank you, and we praise you for it. In Jesus' name. Thank you for watching Biblical Life TV. We hope and pray that today's program edified you in the Word of God. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.